Hi everybody, welcome to BrickVault, this is Mike and welcome to the Top 10 Mox episode. Now please excuse my voice because I had a sore throat for the last couple of days, so I do not sound the best, I sound even worse than usual. Anyway, let's check out the Top 10 Mox for this week, this is where I choose my favorite ones from the passing week and there's a bunch of good sci-fi builds definitely to choose from. Before we go any further, I want you guys to check out our web store at www.brickvault.toys where we provide awesome mocks pretty much on a weekly basis. The latest one is the Orca in a very cool pose jumping out of the water, so check that one out. Jack also made a video about this mock the last Friday. Also remember that every purchase you guys make in our web store supports our channel here at BrickVault and also the designers that we work with to provide you those awesome mocks. The end of the episode is filled with your fan creations, so keep sending them, the email is on the screen. And now on to the mocks. We're gonna start with something really small, this is coming from Sad Brick, and we have a bonsai tree. I always like to choose a mock that has some excellent part usage and this one here has the round course arm. And on top of that we have some beautiful build for its leaves with some great detailing on top portraying this beautiful crafted tree. The blue stand is contrasting very nice, we have some 1x1s in this olive green to contrast even more. And if that build for some reason is not beautiful enough for you, Sadbrick also posted this one, the legendary white Sakura Island, and that is most definitely another micro build at its finest. So follow him on Flickr, I'm gonna leave all the links below of course. Under number 9 I want to place my mech of the week, this is coming from Marco Marozzi, a very talented and well-known builder. Those are actually two mechs that he posted last week. The FCA AHM 4th Heavy Mech, which packs a punch in this beautiful olive green color, quite military looking if you ask me. There is a very beefy looking guy and instead of talking about all the details I'm just gonna drool over it, you should do the same. The second one is I think an iteration of the first, this is the All Terrain Walking Fortress Liberator and this picture is my favorite as it's standing next to the friend's doll. Very cool and if you are looking for some really beefy mechs packing a punch, I think Marco Marozzi's uh, Flickr page is the one to check out. Number 8, we're going to the medieval ages, no mechs here. A very talented builder, Air Lego, is showing off the Falcon Top Keep. First off, I love the crane on the top and the masonry around the building, it deserves some really good praise. I love how clean and simple it looks, but yet it's still a pretty complex build. As you can see, some activities are going on on the rooftop as the keep is still being built. And I love the simple landscaping at the bottom, just portraying the location. And if anyone asks how these guys post so much builds, Air Lego is mentioning that this build is actually 3 years in the making, started December 2015, so talk about commitment. And the number 7 might be Execuo because it is another medieval build coming from a Polish builder Sebastian Bachuszewski and the first impression I had is that it is something taken from the Witcher 3 video game. At the beginning of the game I remember Geralt visiting one of the inns at the crossroads in the early area of the game and this kind of reminds me so much, it has all the details that I remember from the game, a lot of beautiful foliage, the dirt road with some horses and wagons traveling through it, the masonry of the walls is simply excellent, great technique used here, a minor stable to give your horse some rest, the second floor of the building offers some rooms for tired guests and I guess the only thing that is missing here is the minifigure of Geralt the Witcher. Number 6, very different build coming from Melan E, one of my favorite designers on Flickr. The title says day out in autumn but it is actually portraying the 1890s penny farthing uh, bicycle or the high wheeler as many people call them, one of the most iconic uh, devices to travel and uh, can be considered one of the first ever things to be named a bicycle, and that amazing build not only portrays the amazing model, but also some items from the era that complement it very well. We have the umbrella and some sort of a picnic basket, that is an excellent technique to of a build there. There is the old school gramophone with some beautiful golden elements to it, great use of those uh, foliage pieces to portray the autumn leaves on the ground, and the lamppost is not only massive, but very well made as well. So overall a very nice composition of a scene, almost a, like a piece of an art, and I guess that is another reason I love Melan E's builds so much. Did I mention sci-fi in the beginning? I should have said medieval because this is the third build that makes it to the list this week. Coming from Soccer Kid 6 we have Gardar's Cloth Goods, a small merchant shop in the medieval ages, and this one is mostly showing off the technique used for building those walls. Insanely complicated I might say, but the effect is simply mesmerizing. I kind of overuse that word, but there is no word 
word better to describe this effect I had when seeing this mock. So as you can see those gaps uh, between those tiles in the walls giving that 3D effect are just working the way they should. The cobblestone is made using a bunch of uh, round tiles and there is also a plethora of techniques for the second floor of the building and so on and so on that just make the whole scene very very complete. So really cool, I'm sorry it was so good I couldn't skip on that one even though it was a third medieval build in this episode. Alright, here is the sci-fi part of this week's episode, this one is coming from Clue, this is the UFO Green Tower, 1.2 meters tall, that's insane. And as the designer Clue describes, this one was made to give some housing for the uh, classic space green spacemen that were never having a home before. Worth mentioning is that the height of the tower is achieved using the old sports field section 8x16 lego bricks that were used in some old soccer fields from lego, not many people recognize those, but they actually work a great purpose in this build. If you look closely you can spot a lot of easter eggs hidden in this build, I'm not gonna name them, just have fun spotting them, and I do love all the small details on top of that, like the wheelbarrows in space, some guy like sweeping the landing pad, some really cool builds for those small speeders slash spaceships that they use to fly around, there is a crane with some creature in it, a control tower that is very cartoony and so on and so on I can keep going but you just should gaze at those pictures. Of course I'm gonna leave a link below to the full resolution on the Flickr page. Number 3 is coming from nobody else but Simon and H, uh, I think one of the most talented builders right now on Flickr, and we are keeping the micro Harry Potter extravaganza over the last few episodes. This one is Durmstrang and Hogwarts. The first thing that I did notice is that the water is made by using the blue dragon wing pieces. Excellent choice of parts, I don't think you can top that in that episode, maybe with that rancor arm from the beginning, but still it's pretty amazing. The ship itself is a very good build as well, great hull is pretty cute at this scale and the main tower of Hogwarts is, well, towering above anything else. Beneath the tower you can spot some rock formations made by the Nexonites elements, there is the Fort Anglia, the Whomping Willow and overall a very 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 good scene. Number 2 is a personal choice of mine because I am a massive aviation fan. Coming from Crash Kramer that built the beautiful Mad Max 2 V8 interceptor that Jack showcased in the last episode, but around that time Crash also posted the Vote F4U 1A Corsair, a World War II era navy based plane, one of the most beautiful ever made in my opinion and the scale is enormous. Just a quick reminder that Crash Kramer takes his time to make his builds, the F4U Corsair appears uh, 3 years after his amazingly beautiful F14 Tomcat, possibly the best one ever made in LEGO. The skill is insane, all the custom decals and the vacuum form canopy I don't really mind as long as it serves the purpose and that is what I call a very accomplished modeler slash LEGO builder, so thank you for that one. If you know me, for number one spots I like to choose something epic that just blows my mind in many ways. For this week we have a ship uh, that uh, was not finished uh, before the Jack's September episode that was published last week. This one is coming from Brandon Griffith and that's the Battlestar Galactica BSG-75. The pictures were taken by Bricknerd aka Tommy Williamson so you can tell quality. And here is some numbers to well blow your mind. 29,000 Lego pieces used, 47 inches long. 18 inches wide, 300 hours to complete the build, the ship is 1 to 1210 scale. It uses some custom printing, lighting as well, but I don't mind as long as it is an epic build. And it certainly is an epic build, I love the feeling of intimidation that this thing gives. The whole fuselage is looking very well with those shades as like the surface changes between every single inch. Four massive engines in the back are beautifully lit up with the custom lights and there is even more gribbling on the top of the fuselage in the back in the middle section and the front cockpit area is another thing to drool over. So there you go, another pretty amazing ship timber build to join the Hall of Fame. And that's gonna be it for this week's top 10 mocks episode, I did have more mocks, I'm gonna leave more links below. Honorable mentions are the Hybris by Ralph Langer, another amazing ship, the Kinetic Tardis from Josh David Lego Creations, wonderful micro builds from Hogwarts by Jonas Kram, a 1977 Ford Granada Mark I by Mateusz Waldowski from Poland, and a series of steampunk builds made by Marcus Ronge under the name Netbricks Full Steam, so check those out, I really recommend it. And now it's time to show off your fan creations that are gonna be flashing on the screen right now, I appreciate you guys very much 
much sending those in uh, send more for next week rules and the email are below and uh, thank you so much for watching if you enjoy our content don't forget to leave a like and subscribe and you can always click the bell button to be notified for every new video thanks so much for watching again it was mike and i'll see you next time on brick vault Thank you.